You're listening to the Chad HD Show On Demand. Good for you. Now download the KFYO app and listen live weekday afternoons, 5 to 7 p.m. Central. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. Good evening, Lubbock, Amarillo, Abilene, Wichita Falls, Midland, Odessa, Dallas, Fort Worth, down in Houston, over in El Paso, and anywhere else, inside or outside, the great state of Texas, wherever. You may be listening. Welcome in on this Open Line Friday. That's right, you've made it to the end of the week on this August 2nd. Congratulations. Uh, I'm sure you're happy. Hopefully you're on your way home right now. Maybe you're wrapping things up at the office. Maybe you've already made it home. Maybe you've already made it home for the weekend, and uh, and, and, and maybe you're going to grill tonight. I don't know. But um, maybe you're just trying to decide what the weekend plans are going to be. Uh, we welcome you into the program no matter where you are. How you're listening, whether it's on air, online, uh, however you're listening today, uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you being out there. Uh, maybe you're stuck in traffic. You're in that one, uh, you know, behind that one person who just won't quick, you don't, won't, they just, they won't turn. They won't or they won't make that turn, uh, that they need to make. And the light goes way, way too quickly. We've all been there. We've all been there from time to time. And uh, we welcome you into the show. Uh, we've got quite a bit to get into today, a lot of 2024 news to get into, as uh, that's pretty much going to be, well, what we uh, what we see a lot of <laughs> heading into uh, the, uh, the, the election, a lot of campaign 2024 news. Uh, so we've got uh, all of that uh, to get to on the program today. Uh, we've got your phone calls, your text messages, uh, what you learned this week. We want to find out. What did you learn this week? Whether it's something serious, not so serious, whatever it may be, we we bring back uh, one of one of your favorites. What did you learn this week? You can text in at eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. That's eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. When you do text in on any topic, anything you want to talk about, any question you may. Want to throw out there for everybody or uh, throw out uh, for me to talk about. Uh, we want to know who you are. So give us a name and then let us know where you're listening from. We like to know that information. You can also get in touch by just giving us a call. 1-800-687-0790. That's 1-800-687-0790. The very first voice you hear from when you dial in today he knows all about the history of radio. Nick, the first voice you hear from when you dial in today. Nick, how are you today? I'm uh, I'm doing well. Yeah, on a Friday, which is always good to hear. Um, uh, it, it, I got a little sad. You did. I, no. I got a little sad today. No, um, it's it's um, international. Uh -huh. Ice cream sandwich day. It is International Ice Cream yeah. Sandwich Day, and, yes. And, and, and the reason why I got sad, it brought a tear to my eye. Yeah. I don't eat those anymore. <laughs> and I loved them. Ice cream sandwiches were so good, and I don't eat them anymore. They're, they're still... They're, they, I know they're yeah. still out there. I know. I, I can. Yeah. But I don't. Like, because, you could stop by one of your favorite gas yeah, stations, maybe. Maybe. And pick one up. Maybe. But it's just... It's one of those things where... Kind of like 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 a birthday cake, you know. It's just like a. It, it, to me, it's so uh, typical of growing up. And you know, I would always come inside if I was out at the pool. You know, come inside, have a little ice cream sandwich. 
Wait a minute. Cool what, down in the day. What about what? How does this relate to birthday cake? Do you not like birthday cake either? Because it, it, it's similar. It's in the same vein. Oh, okay. It's part it's, of a childhood. Right. A childhood long lost. Yes. Which is what is. Do you not have me. birthday cakes anymore? Is that what's happened? I just I don't eat I don't eat really eat birthday cakes anymore. I don't eat any of these things anymore. Which yeah. is which is the sad part. So no one's given you a birth. That's what you're saying is that no one's presented you with a birthday. Give cake. me a birthday cake is what I'm saying. Okay. I want a birthday right. cake. Is really the when is the your crux birthday? Of it's 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 coming up. It's at some point. When is uh, it? It's it's this month. Is it really? It is this it's month, in yeah. August. So yeah. when? I'll when, leave that as a surprise. No, we need I'll to know. You. We need to know when's your birthday. It's uh, the eighth of August. Oh, so it's really coming up. Yeah, it's it's almost here. Okay, yeah. all right. So I expect a birthday cake now. Since you, now you know. Yeah. Um, no ice cream sandwich though. Even though I just waxed poetic. What about how great a? It is. Let me ask you this, my friend. Yeah. A birthday ice cream cake. Yeah. That'd work. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty that. good. That's yeah, acceptable. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, growing up, it, we used to always, obviously, if you had the choice, you'd always go the ice cream cake. You know, if you always, if, if, if your parents asked you what you wanted, uh, did you want a regular cake, a boring old, you know, basic cake? Or yeah. did you want the actual, you know, the ice cream cake, a little melted a little bit? Let me you tell know? you this. I never got the option. I never got the option. A normal cake? Uh, no. Oh. Cookie cake. Okay, now. I I'm, went with the cookie cake. Um, to be honest. Yeah. That's the least, that's the worst type of cake. No. <laughs> it's delicious. I, it's dry. No. Oh, it's like a well, cookie. If you get a horrible <laughs> cookie cake, it's dry. But if you go to the place that actually does good cookie cakes, yeah. then no, it's not dry. Uh, maybe I've just never been there. Apparently never, you haven't. I, I haven't had good cookie cake. But no. every, every time I think, I'm like, I don't, I like brownies, but I don't like, a, I don't like cookie cake. Yeah. Oh, cookie cake. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. I, I yeah. Throw some ice cream on there. No, Maybe. I don't need. I don't Maybe. need ice cream on the cookie cake. Well, it I just might. makes it soggy. I don't need that. I just <laughs> just give me a good, God fearing cookie cake. Yeah, and and I'm happy. the 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 birthday ice cream cake to me is good in theory, but then it just you bring it out, mm -hmm. and it's you know like for a cake you bring it out, and everyone has time. Everyone has time to eat it. At their own leisure, you bring out the ice cream cake, and at that point, it is you, you, everyone hurry up and eat it. Otherwise, this thing is going to turn into a disaster. But that's a positive thing in some cases because sometimes you just want people. You're like, all right, this is my kid's birthday has dragged on long enough. <laughs> if I bring out the ice cream cake, then I've put out a timer. Yeah, and I, I I put a doomsday clock on the on the on the birthday party. That's true. That's so now good. Everybody, hey, you got it. If you want cake, you got to eat it now. But I don't do be out well, again. If you're taking it out for a bunch of kids, no. do you want them with the messy ice cream cake? I feel like sure, uh, but I mean, kids are going to make a mess of. They're going to make a mess no matter what. Right? Yeah. 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 I don't yeah. know. So uh, National Ice Cream Sandwich Day uh, makes Nick very sad. Because uh, he remembers. Now, would you get the ice cream sandwiches from the from the ice cream truck that Sometimes. would uh, that would go by? Sometimes I would. Yeah. yeah. Other times, just a quick uh, uh, stop at the at the Piggly Wiggly in Wisconsin. Yeah. And to the freezer section. Yeah. And get the uh, the old uh, the nine, Piggly Wiggly. The Piggly Love Wiggly. It. Yeah. yeah. We uh, that was our only store. Very small town I grew up in. It was less a couple thousand people in the town, and. Um, we had a few grocery stores, but the main one was the one Piggly Wiggly. The Piggly Wiggly, That yeah. we went to. And said, hey, they had great ice cream sandwiches. You know, best memories at the Piggly Wiggly. Yeah. On my birthday, getting that ice cream sandwich in the summer. Mm. Uh, Texter asking, how old will Nick be on his birthday? 16 years old, actually. That's not true. It's my sweet 16. You've got, you've got the nice beard coming in, by the way. It's looking good. you got the yeah. sharp beard. Uh, what are 20? Take a guess. 24. I will not be 24 years old. Okay. How old? Are you? <laughs> it's younger? It's, it, older. Older than 24. Older, okay, 26. Younger than 26. Okay, 25. It's between there. Yeah, it's 25. Okay. 25 right. years old. So I was right when you're 24 now. I am currently. Okay. So, yeah. So I was. So, all right. All right. Yeah, half, the, a point, half a point. Half a point. I was in the ballpark. Now. Okay. Yeah. So you'll be 25. Yeah. Maybe I'll get 25 ice cream sandwiches. Just, and uh, you might. Just for me. You might get 25. Ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. Now, did you just like the vanilla ice cream sandwiches yes. or the cookies and cream no, ice no, cream? No, no, no. 
now just the good the the, the, the OG the OG yeah. vanilla ice cream with the processed sugary uh don't quote talk, unquote sugar or don't cookie. talk about the ice cream sandwich like it's bad okay it's otherwise you're you. not going to get see this is what no I don't want to hear the oh yeah yeah I want I want an ice cream sandwich with the processed sugar. no 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 no, no. <laughs> don't don't give me that don't yeah. that now no, no. no. Just say, I All want right, well, the OG ice cream sandwich. The very healthy, uh, you don't full have of to vitamins. Say, you uh, don't have to say that. That ice cream sandwich is what I like. I'm going to get you a bowl of kale. I'm going to get you a bowl of kale. If you bake it. It's not going to be baked. And you put salt on it. Not going to do like that. Kale chips. You, you, I'd be okay with that. Uh, you could ask Matt Crow to do that for you, and, and he'd happily oblige. Okay? I'm sure he would, yeah. Uh, me, I'll get you a bowl of kale. Just and, freshly picked. And I'll throw 25 candles in there <laughs> and tell you happy birthday. That's what you're going to get. Uh, that's pretty good. That's what you deserve. I'll t- oh, I deserve a bowl of kale with loose candles. That's right. Are the candles lit at least? Are you going to light the candles before I'll, I'll throwing light, them on the... I'll light one of them, and we'll see if the others light uh, in response. Or if the lettuce yeah. uh, burst into flame. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I'll take it. All right. So on, on because of that, I was going to go a different direction. <laughs> With the running topic today, but we'll go with this because uh, today is National Ice Cream Sandwich Day. Your favorite, and I, I guess we'll have to go, is it ice cream novelty item? Is that the right way? Because, you know, you'd go up and, and you could get like the, the ice cream bar. You could get, uh, you know, different types of ice cream items from the, uh, you know, you know from the uh, from the ice cream truck. Uh, what what was your what, as a kid or even as an adult your favorite ice cream novelty item? Maybe it's the Moo Bar. A lot of fans of the Moo Bar uh, that are out there. What are what is your favorite ice cream novelty item? With it being like a hundred and twenty five degrees across the state of Texas, we'll celebrate with a little bit of ice cream uh, on uh, on this Friday. Eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero and you can send us a uh, text uh, you can also uh, get in on the uh, app chat you can also send in your audio uh, via the app as well and pictures all that kind of good stuff uh, so don't forget about that when we come back your phone calls your text start to get into some of the news of the day as well and your favorite ice cream novelty items in honor of national ice cream sandwich day The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock. News Talk 940 in Amarillo. News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene. And in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home. Weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Mr. Rogers says, look for the helpers. You can always find people who are helping. Thank you to all the first responders who put their lives in danger to help us when my brothers and sisters need them. We look out for the helpers because they look out for us. Thank you, first responders! Thank you, first responders! Help us help first responders in your community today. Go to firstrcf.org to learn more. to the Chad HD show on a climate change induced hot day in America. No, I'm not even joking. That That's actually what it's being called uh, by the Washington Post today. U.S. faces exceptional day of climate change driven heat on Friday. It's also summertime in the United States. I, 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 
you know, forget to mention that the uh, heat be made at least three times as probable because of climate change. It's also summer. If if this was January first and it's a uh, hundred degrees outside, okay, all right, all right, maybe. Maybe it's being made three times probable because of climate change on January 1st. It is, hang on, August 2nd. It's hot outside. And by the way, it's not 102 degrees everywhere in the United States. It's hot in Texas. Congratulations. It's always hot this time of year in Texas. You know what makes it probable? Summertime. It gets hot here. The story out of the Washington Post, a coast-to-coast heat wave is bringing abnormally high temperatures to nearly half of the U.S. population. And human-caused climate change is a big reason. According to the Climate Shift Index from the Science Communications Group Climate Central, (laughs) Friday's heat wave is uh, being made at least three times as probable because of climate change. A record 148 million Americans are expected to experience excessive temperatures made at least three times more likely due to climate change. Climate Central wrote on X. Shell Winkley, a meteorologist for Climate Central, wrote that it would be an unprecedented day of climate change-driven heat for the U.S. Let me tell you, folks, let me tell you something. This you're, You are going to see more of this language used. If uh, if Kamala Harris is elected president, they will absolutely start shutting cities down because of climate change driven heat. Just wait. Heat alerts currently cover portions of 33 states, affect 150 million people. On Friday, the worst of the heat is expected from the south to the Mid-Atlantic, where it's always hot in the summer. Heat index is a measure of how hot it fills, factoring in humidity of 105 to 110 are predicted. Parts of the West will also be exceptionally hot, but not as humid. Almost the entire U.S. is forecast to experience above normal temperatures with many locations set to be 10 to 20 degrees higher than normal. Of course, then they get into the role of climate change. And of course, don't remember, don't forget, it's, it's, they're, 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 now they're saying human caused climate change, not just climate change, but human caused climate change. They're really doubling and tripling down on the human caused climate change out there. Because again, I think many people can say, yeah, you know what? It is hotter now than it was 20 years ago. By a little bit, you look at some of the data out there, you see it's warmer now. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean it's, it is uh, that we have any control of it whatsoever? No. Our climate is always changing. It has always changed on this planet. We had an ice age. There was a time when the climate... Uh, the, the climate, uh, uh, pushers were saying that we were going to have another ice age. Remember, I think, what was it? Back in the, back in the eighties, we we're going to have another climate, uh, another big ice age was going to hit America. And then when that didn't work out, it was, well, we got to get hotter. And every year we hear about the rising sea levels across the world, but we don't see really any evidence of rising sea levels. And now we have the new term, uh, the, the, cli- the climate change driven heat wave. It can't just be that it's hot outside. It's the middle of summer. It's August. It's typically hot in August. It's typically humid across the mid Atlantic. It's typically humid in Houston and in Dallas, Fort Worth. Yeah. It gets hot outside. You learn to adapt. You learn to deal with it. But I can guarantee you 
that you're going to see in the future, you're going to start seeing states, cities begin to shut down because of climate change. Climate change driven heat. We've got to shut it down because it's abnormal. It's going to happen. Let's see. Don in Lubbock weighing in with his favorite uh, ice cream, uh, you know, the novelty ice creams uh, that he likes. Uh, the uh, Nestle drumsticks is favorite. That getting a nod of approval from Nick. Chad to celebrate National Ice Cream Sandwich Day. The sundown guy would eat a Butterfinger Blizzard or a good old fashioned root beer float. You can send in your uh, your favorite ice cream novelty items on the text line eight zero six. Six eight zero two seven nine zero. Nick thinks he's uh, now too old to eat a uh, ice cream sandwich. That it was something of his youth back when he was a child. Now when he sees it, he looks at it. He looks at the ice cream sandwich and he goes, "No, no, not anymore." <laughs> Mitchell and Abilene three times more likely. I don't think so. There's always a 99.9% probability that it's going to be really hot in Texas in August. How can that ever become three times more likely? Well, you see, uh, Mitchell, you, you have to start with this. First, you have to lie to people. Yeah, that's where it all begins. We'll be right back. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays 5 to 7 p.m. Sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. On the road with Mr. Rhodes. Hey, here's the shocker. Cars are bigger than people. So if you're behind the wheel, be careful. Those crosswalk stripes, yeah, they aren't left over from National Pain of Street like a zebra day. They mean you need to stop for people in crosswalks and yield the right of way when turning at intersections. And no looking at phones, photos, texts, emails, or holding your jeans or where that nickel fell. Oh, and please, slow down. Sound advice mixed in with professional sound effects. Be safe, drive smart. A message from Textile. This message is from the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. Veterans, do you take medication? At VA, prescriptions have a range of copay levels from free to $5, $8, or $11 for a 30 day prescription, depending on your eligibility. Refill by mail, in person, or on VA's mobile app. Sign up at VA.gov or call 1-800-MY-VA-411. The news and talk of West Texas. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. Don't you forget about Chad at Chad Hasty Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and on your radio. Now back to the Chad Hasty Show. Back on the Chad Hasty Show. Thank you very much for tuning in today. In the next hour, we're going to replay that interview that we had earlier in the week with uh, Jesse Jane Duff. A lot of folks asking uh, for uh, for that to be. Replayed. We'll do that at about six thirty-five uh, this uh, this evening. So uh, you can stay tuned for that. Uh, Elizabeth weighing in on the text line uh, says, "I'm with Don on the Nestle drumsticks novelty ice cream sandwich items. I uh, went the Sundown guy on the DQ Blizzard, but I'd probably choose a Heath Bar Blizzard instead of a Butterfinger Blizzard." Uh, thanks for bringing these to mind today. Perfect treat for a hot day, which is not caused by human-induced climate change. Elizabeth, that's what the Washington Post says. It's right there. It says the human-caused climate change, a human-driven climate change, is uh, is uh, what it's uh, what it's at at this point. Which I guess. The, the half of the country that is not, ab, quote unquote, abnormally or exceptionally hot, I, I, I guess they, they don't have any climate change in that part of the country. That's pretty good. 
So it's only part of the country that has climate change now, right? Otherwise, everybody would be hot. Everyone would be exceptionally hot today if the entire country was seeing climate change, right? It, it, I, I almost, I wonder what's going to happen in the winter when some of the northern states have human driven, exceptionally cold weather and the southern states aren't as cold. Hmm. It's going to be something to look for. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction right now. It's uh, Friday, August 2nd at 5, what, is, what time is it, 537? Is that right? Yeah, okay. At some point this winter, now I don't want you all to get jealous of my prediction skills, okay? But at some point this winter, we will see human-driven exceptionally cold weather I'm going to say in the Midwest and in the northern states we're going to see some really below average temperatures hang on it's still coming to me I'm still I'm predicting here and Texas along with some of the more southeastern states into Florida will not be as cold. Just a, again, that, that just my prediction as of uh, Friday, August 2nd at, uh, at 5.37 p.m., that at some point this winter we will see very cold weather. In fact, it will be almost the complete opposite of the map that we're seeing with the exceptionally hot weather. Very odd, very odd how uh, how that uh, might play out this winter. 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. As a welder, I worked outside a building in an electric substation in South Texas around uh, July of 2000. The temperature was around 100 and 15 degrees Fahrenheit. That's impossible. It's impossible, John. They did not have uh, 100 degree weather back in the early 2000s. I'm, I'm sorry, you. Yeah, yeah. That, that's just absolutely crazy, John. John out in Wichita Falls, which is uh, one of the one of the always uh, big hot spots in Texas, is uh, Wichita Falls. Another uh, texture, Philip. Hey, Philip, how you doing? Uh, I prefer a homemade ice cream sandwich made of sweet, va- sweet vanilla ice cream on plain graham crackers. Store made. I prefer the Neapolitan sandwich. Eight zero six six eight zero two seven nine zero. You can send in your thoughts. On the text line. How about this story? This out of the uh, Washington Post. Headline, a true millennial, J.D. Vance posted his whole life and his dog's life online. J.D. Vance, Donald Trump's newly minted running mate, has posted his uh, life on the Internet for nearly two decades. In 2005, while serving as a combat correspondent in Iraq, he made a blog. In 2012, he created his first public Spotify playlist. Called Making Dinner, which featured the Backstreet Boys, Justin Bieber. Oh no! Now, now I've got to question everything about JD Vance. Now, I, ladies and gentlemen, now that he in, in 2012 he's putting the Backstreet Boys on his playlist. Oh no, JD Vance. This this is this is something to be concerned about here, ladies and gentlemen. His Venmo account was public, too. According to a report by Wired, his friends on the payment app included Tucker Carlson. He tweeted and deleted. He yelped, and he started a second blog. As the first major party vice presidential nominee from the millennial generation, Vance, who turns 40 uh, today, 
is also the first who grew up with the option of posting his every thought and feeling, his favorite music, his reviews of random businesses, one of the best restaurants in Cincinnati or anywhere, even his reflections on Game of Thrones on the Internet for all to see. And like other millennials, Vance was uh, sort of an Internet pioneer embracing new platforms without much apparent trepidation. Younger Americans, members of Gen Z and Gen Alpha, were born into a world shaped by social media, but Vance and his contemporaries were born before social media existed, joined as teens or young adults and became the first generation to discover how uh, they posted could affect their lives and careers for decades to come. I said years ago, and you're going to see this a lot more often, uh, but I said years ago that the millennial generation, which, like, I'm on the very end of the millennial generation. I'm, like, right at the very end of it, or beginning of it, I guess. Yeah, uh, right at the beginning of the millennial. I'm an old millennial. But I've said for years now that future candidates for office and presidential candidates for sure their lives were going to be lived online. And everything they write, everything that they have reviewed, everything that uh, they have uh, posted, it's going to come back and in some cases bite them. Because we're all young and dumb at some point. And you post things that you probably shouldn't have posted. Now, so far, they haven't really shown uh, that about J.D. Vance. You know, he's one of these older millennials, too, to where he probably still went, yeah, I'm not going to post everything uh, on social media. The younger you are, the more you live your life on social media. I do have to question his love of the Backstreet Boys back in uh, 2012. I mean, that that is something to ask him about. But it is interesting uh, having the first millennial VP and everyone scouring his, uh, his his old writings, his old blogs, and everything that he uh, everything that he would say in the past. This is why you have to be very careful. For parents out there, you, you've got you got kids. You want to teach them how to, well, why they need to be careful online. This is why nothing every, things live forever. On the internet. You may think you can delete it, but things live forever online. You gotta be very careful. There have been baseball players who tweeted dumb things out when they were kids. Who, uh, not just baseball players, but, uh, athletes who would tweet things out or put things on social media when they were younger and years later, Years and years and yet 10 plus years later, it comes out and it bites them and they get in trouble for it. So you got to be very, very careful of uh, what you post on social media. Let's see a texture. Do you think if Biden was really worried about rising seas, he would have bought an expensive home on the waterfront? <laughs> Forget about Biden. Biden, I mean, you know, Biden forgets things. Uh, Obama. Remember, Obama bought uh, land on, and a house on Martha's Vineyard. Doesn't seem too concerned about the rising sea levels. 806-680-2790. Let's go ahead and take the break. When we come back, we'll get to your phone calls on an open line Friday. Chad Easty Show. The titan of Texas talk radio, Chad Hasty, Talking with newsmakers and about the issues that matter to you. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Chad's show is also digital with the Chad Hasty Show podcast. The Chad Hasty Show podcast can be downloaded on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and the Radio On Demand page at kfyo.com. The Chad Hasty Show, all across Texas during your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Chance Wilcox lived his life with a kind heart, and anyone would tell you that. 
But I'll never forget the call that my only son, with so much life ahead of him, had been killed instantly by a distracted driver on her cell phone. The happiness we all had and enjoyed up until that time was gone in one second by a 100% preventable action. Heads up, Texas. Using your phone behind the wheel can be deadly. Talk, text, crash. Brought to you by TextDot. Back to Chad Hastie's show. Uh, Texture says, Backstreet Boys, Chad, you do what you got to do to impress the ladies. Box wine, Chef already only goes so far, my man. That's true. It's a good point. Very good. By the way, I have found uh, J.D. Vance's uh, Spotify playlist. They're pretty good, actually. <laughs> we'll get to we'll get into some of what uh, some of the songs J.D. Vance likes. This is great. This is this is giving you a peek a peek at who J.D. Vance really is. Uh, I like this. This is good. See, this is uh, this is the interesting part of the millennial candidate out there. They. They live their life online. You can find out a lot about them. But before we do that, let's go to the phones. Uh, 1-800-687-0790. That's where Lee is at. Lee, what's what's happening today? Hey, how you doing? Happy Friday to you. Yeah, to you. Hey, uh, you know, with everything going on in the world, I was just listening to the news, and I heard I heard the new Secret Service uh, head hunts were talking. And he said one of the problems they had was the communication, uh, with their transmission, the communication. And I think I found a solution for them. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to have to write it up, send it to them. You know, about a few years ago, more than I can remember, I raised two grandchildren. And I've always had dogs. And when you have dogs, you got to walk them. So I thought I, I got, when my grandchildren got old enough to go, I told him to start walking my dogs, and I and I, I looked back into my military career and military thinking and said, "Well, I have to have some way to get in communication with them. I'm not going to give them a cell phone." So I went to local Walmart and bought some little walkie-talkies for like ten bucks. I bought four of them: one for me, one for my wife, and one for my two grandchildren. There was dog one, dog two, big dog, which was me, of course. And then mama dog. And you know those things, we never had a problem. The kids would take off and walk long ways. And it was clear. And I even taught them, I taught them two new words. I told them over and Roger. And they did a great job. So you need that's to, technology. you got to send the suggestion in to the Secret Service. Because, I mean, the, that, that would help out with communication right there. Yeah, or they could have just had some flags, like have a red flag. If you see something. A smoke wave, signal, maybe. Flag, Send up the red flag. Hey, smoke single. When you see a threat, let's do the smoke single. Yeah, I mean, they had enough. <laughs> to be honest, they had enough time to start a fire. Let's be honest. They did have enough time to actually start a fire. They could have made a couple of rare rib, ribeyes or something. That's that right. Time, I know, you know, yeah. Maybe, maybe well done. I, you know, I don't know. I, I, they may have not planned it. They may not. But they sure as hell didn't stop it. Yeah, something sure does think about it. I don't know if they're that uh, <laughs> incompetent or are they that smart? Because they knew there was a threat coming. Yeah. I ran and told them, how long did they know? We don't know that. We know when they told them. Yeah. And yeah. they said they've been denying Secret Service protection, so I don't know. Again, you either have to accept the fact that it was a massive, massive, massive breach in security and a complete letdown in security, or that it goes even deeper than that. I mean, there, there's only two exactly. options here, and neither of them are good options. And and uh, probably more heads need to roll because of it. Hey, Lee, thank you yeah. so much. Appreciate you it. Thank you. Take care, buddy. Bye. Have a great weekend. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chad, are you hitting up First Friday Art Trail tonight? No. No, not to, but not because of the, any of the recent controversies. We just we haven't gone in a long time because it's uh, it's 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 you know it's very crowded and we uh, we just don't go. We just I don't like being in big crowds either, and and so 
uh, no, I just kind of stay away from that. We're going to go have a uh, go to a uh, go and have some good Italian food tonight. That's what we're going to be uh, doing. You can send in your thoughts on the text line, 806-680-2790. Okay, so going back to uh, 2012, the Making Dinner Playlist. Do you want to you want to hear some of these options, Nick? I want to know if you think these are good. Okay, now this was this this uh, playlist was made on December fifteenth of twenty twelve. So he's getting ready, maybe for like a little Christmas, little Christmas dinner, maybe. Uh, so he's got on the first song, the first Noel from Nat King Cole. Good song. That's good. Gold on the ceiling from the Black Keys. Then he's got the Backstreet Boys, I Want It That Way. One Time from Justin Bieber, Shake It Out, Little Talks, Fishing in the Dark, Nitty Gritty Turt Band. Love it! West Coast Dog Days Are Over, Mountain Sound, and Satellite of Love. Fantastic! He added that back in uh, 2014. He's got other playlists, too. Pretty good music. We'll be right back. The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media. Broadcasting from the great state of Texas, this is the Chad Hasty Show. News and views with a Lone Star perspective. You can sound off during the show by sending Chad a text at 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Or call in at 1-800-687-0790. Now, here's Chad Hasty. Back on the Chad Hasty Show. Thank you very much for tuning in today. You can send in your thoughts on the text line, 806-680-2790. A little bit later on, we'll be replaying the interview we had the other day with Jesse Shane Duff. Trump promising to unleash hell on Kamala Harris on Saturday. So that should be something to look forward to. The uh, Trumpster. Sitting out today, uh, 24 hours until we unleash hell. At this time tomorrow, crooked Kamala's worst nightmares come true. Trump's campaign wrote in an email, according to The Hill, tomorrow I step on stage and deliver an op- uh, deliver open border czar Kamala Harris, the worst defeat of her failed political career. Trump did not expand on what his attacks would entail, but said he would expect thousands of attendees to flock to deep blue Atlanta, uh, Georgia itself a swing state with a Republican governor, but the state voted for Biden back in 2020. The rally will take place at Georgia State University Convocation Center, expected to begin at about 5 p.m. Eastern time. So be on the lookout for that. That uh, that, that could be good. J- J.D. Vance will also be at the rally. You know, J.D. Vance, he's been slapped around by the news media. They're going after J.D. Vance for everything. And what they, I, I mean, how are they not talking about his his music selections? Uh, it, it, you know, he's got some good taste in music. And I think that's important, too. It, t- it tells you a little bit about who he is. Did you know that J.D. Vance... Because remember J.D. Vance, he's supposed to be uh, this evil Republican who, uh, you know, know, only, uh, you know, he doesn't like black people and, uh, you know, he's racist and homophobic, all this kind of stuff. He he has an amazing playlist of soul music. He titled it Soul Plus because it's, you know, a little bit extra. 
Nick, I want to know what your thoughts on some of these uh, some of these songs here. Whitney Houston, I want to dance with somebody. Not really soul music, but you know, it's it's Whitney Houston. And then it goes into Marvin Gaye, Mercy, Mercy Me. It's pretty good. Aretha Franklin, Son of a Preacher Man. Ray Charles, Unchain My Heart. Amy Winehouse, Back to Black. Another Whitney Houston, How Will I Know? He made this list back in 2013, by the way. A younger J.D. Vance. Chain of Fools, Aretha Franklin, uh, also on his playlist. Heard it through the grapevine from Marvin Gaye. I've been loving you too long. Otis Redding. Ray Charles, I got a woman. Otis Redding again, wonderful world. Sam Cooke, a change is going to come. And then, of course, if you're going to have Aretha, and he loves Aretha Franklin. Respect. It's on there. And then another Aretha Franklin hit. You make me feel like a natural woman. On May 5th, he also added Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On. I mean, the the man has good... Sh- he's He's got some good taste in music. You know, you gotta, you gotta give him that. Nick, what do you think? Is that, a, is that a pretty good, pretty good playlist for a little bit of soul music? He also has Amy Winehouse's Rehab uh, on there. Uh, My Girl. What Did I Say from Ray Charles? Yeah, just some, uh, some good music. It's, now, fans of Shady Vance, they can go and I, I guess you can follow his playlist. And uh, you can listen to what J.D. Vance likes to listen to. He's, he also uh, has another playlist. This is amazing. This is funny. Uh, Morning Has Broken. Where he's got some Mumford and Sons, Simon and Garfunkel. Got a little Cat Stevens action on there. Bonnie Raitt, Fleetwood Mac, Tracy Chapman, James Taylor, Johnny Cash. Yeah, I'm telling you, some, uh, some pretty good, pretty good music that, uh, that JD Vance has on his old playlist from back in 2013. That, uh, that the, the news media has gone through to see who is JD Vance. Who is this guy? Who is this weird guy who has a really good taste in music? They can't use that against them. Dang it. Very upset about that. 806-680-2790. You can send in your thoughts on the text line. Uh, Kamala Harris uh, was ripped by J.D. Vance for... Uh, a little bit of a word salad that uh, that she had out there. Uh, Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance criticizing the media and Kamala Harris over her comments following uh, the uh, uh, repatriation of Americans jailed in Russia. Vance appeared to critique Harris's unscripted remarks made while standing beside Biden at Joyce Base Andrews in Camp Springs, Maryland. Vance said on X, it's amazing that journalists can look at themselves in the mirror while letting this person uh, coast to a major party nomination for president. Is anyone going to ask this person a question? Harris has not held a press conference in nearly two weeks span since she became the presumptive nominee. During a reporter gaggle, Harris said of the prisoner swap, this is just an extraordinary testament to the importance of having a president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rest in understanding the significance of diplomacy and strengthening alliances. The clip first posted by the uh, former president's uh, war room included a response calling Harris's comments 
a significance of a passage of time 2.0. Prior reference to a uh, instance where Harris repeated the same clause over and over while going off script. She's not very good going off script. That's that's what gets her. That's what got her in 2019, and it's going to get her at this t- at some point in this election. Kamala Harris, this is an extraordinary testament to the importance of having a president who understands the power of diplomacy and understands the strength that rests in understanding the significance of of diplomacy. That's, that means nothing. She's just saying stuff at that point. None of that has any true meaning whatsoever. Joe Biden didn't even know what was going on. Did you see him trying to get on the airplane? He got on the airplane that brought in the, uh, the, the those who were being held in Russia. There was nobody else on the plane. There are some who think that he believed he was getting on Air Force One. And it was time for him to go nap nap. You see him shuffling over the airplane and everyone's kind of following him. And then he goes up the stairs and then he just, he walks into the airplane and he disappears. And the Secret Service, they're down on the ground going, somebody want to go get Grandpa? Does somebody say, whose turn is it? To go and get Grandpa. Finally, he comes out. He's like, hey. The, this is the, this is the, this is uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the guy that the media is telling you is he's just fine. He's just fine now to, uh, to be, to be president. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got a couple of issues, but other than that, it's easy. he's okay. He's all right. No one's even talking about Joe these days. Rick weighed in on the text line, the Biden-Harris administration, the most know-nothing, do-nothing administration in our uh, country's history. Oh, they've done a lot. They've done a lot of bad things. They haven't done anything good. Uh, just look at the inflation and the amount of spending. They've they've learned how to spend a lot of money. 806-680-2790. When we come back, your phone calls, your text, and much more. Ah, nice little song from the Shady Vance playlist. Here on the Chat AC Show, we'll be right back. The Chad Hasty Show can be heard all over West Texas, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Tune in on News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO in Lubbock, News Talk 940 in Amarillo, News Talk 94.7 and 1470 KYYW in Abilene, and in Wichita Falls on News Talk 96.3 and 1290. The Chad Hasty Show. Make it a part of your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Say you never give in to a meltdown and never fill your feed with kid photos. You say you'd never put a pacifier in your mouth to clean it and never let them run wild through the grocery store. So when you say you'd never let them get into a car without you there, know it can happen. One in four hot car deaths happen when a kid gets into an unlocked car and can't get out. Never happens. Before you leave the car, always stop. Look. Lock. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. Yeah, 
You can send in uh, your thoughts on the text line. A uh, video leaked earlier today that uh, shows a very real possibility that Kamala Harris has picked Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro as her running mate. The uh, Philadelphia mayor prompted confusion with the post Friday. Proud to be back with so many leaders from across our region supporting Kamala Harris for president and at Josh Shapiro P for VP. She included a video with footage of a recent press conference that ended with the uh, message, Josh Shapiro for vice president. Journalist Ernest Owens uh, then claimed that he had heard from a source that the post was due to be scheduled for Monday, but was accidentally published early. Sources, however, told the Philadelphia Inquirer that the post is simply an endorsement and a show of support for Shapiro. Saying it's not an announcement of anything. This is just the mayor showing her support for a longtime friend. Shapiro, considered one of the favorites to be here as VP, has been vetted by her campaign. He canceled a number of planned fundraisers in the Hamptons this weekend. His team offered no hint that the cancellation had anything to do with the VP selection process. The governor's trip was planned several weeks ago, included several fundraisers for his own campaign committee. His schedule has changed. He's no longer traveling to the Hamptons this weekend. Harris expected to announce her running mate early next week, maybe as soon as Monday. And so there are uh, a few different stories out today about uh, who Harris uh, may be, uh, maybe, uh, you know, selecting. Harris narrowing her VP search to six people, according to the Washington Post. Now, all of these people are going to be called moderates. They're not moderates. They may be a little bit more moderate than Kamala Harris, but they're not your moderate blue dog Democrat. For example, Josh Shapiro, who the media throws around as a moderate candidate, believes that trans women are women. He tweeted that out, that trans women are women too. So he doesn't even know what a woman is. Mark Kelly, the senator out of Arizona, he wants to take away all your guns. Kamala Harris, by the way, wants to uh, issue an executive order taking away the AR-15. Kamala Harris has hired Obama campaign veterans to join her effort. She's fired the Biden loyalist. That didn't take long. The finalist for VP, according to the Washington Post, for uh, Senator, uh, excuse me, for uh, Vice President Harris, includes Governors Andy Brashear of Kentucky, J.B. Pritzker of Illinois, Josh Shapiro of Pennsylvania, Tim Walls of Minnesota, Pete Buttigieg, the Transportation Secretary, and Senator Mark Kelly of Arizona. Representatives for Bashir, Buttigieg, and Shapiro confirmed those officials had canceled previously scheduled plans for the weekend. The finalist, all white men, reflecting an assumption that voters would prefer a gender and racial balance with the first black woman and first person of South Asian descent. Leading a major party presidential ticket four years ago, Biden selected Harris amid a sense in many Dem- amid many in the Democrat Party that it was important to have a woman and a person of color on the ticket. He said he would do that. <laughs> Liz Cheney not on the VP list. No, Liz Cheney not on the list. It's not going to be J.P. Uh, Pritzker out of. Illinois, uh, that that's just them being nice. The favorites, I would say, have got to be uh, Andy Brashear of Kentucky, John Shapiro of Pennsylvania, and uh, Mark Kelly of Arizona. Those are the three favorites. 
Those are the names that keep popping up. Pete Buttigieg. If the Democrats really cared about the LGBT community, uh, they'd go ahead and press forward with Pete Buttigieg. But they won't do that. They'll say Pete is really good where he's at right now being transportation secretary. He's not. He's not doing a, a good job. But that's where they'll leave him. The uh, vetting process. Again, you you want to know who's running things. The vetting process overseen by former Attorney General Eric Holder. You remember Eric Holder, don't you? From the Obama administration? Yeah. Harris's campaign has brought on Liz Allen, the current Undersecretary for Public Diplomacy, and public affairs at the uh, State Department to serve as chief of staff to Harris's running mate. Allen worked as Harris's communications director when she was Biden's running mate. Allen also served under Biden when he was vice president, served as deputy White House communications director at the end of Barack Obama's second term. Again, bringing in all the old Obama folks. You want to know who's running things? There you go. It's absolutely Obama's fourth term. This time with someone who is uh, really excited that Obama's probably going to take over. You have uh, uh, a lot of the uh, old uh, Obama folks who have uh, gone to uh, gone over to uh, Kamala Harris's campaign in recent days. 806-680-2790. I don't know why some of you are so against uh, Pete Buttigieg. Hey, let me tell you, Pete, hey, all, all these folks are uh, just as far left. Might just be that you know Pete Buttigieg a little bit more. These, uh, these governors... Outside of their state, they're not well known. Again, Andy Bashir of Kentucky, Josh Shapiro. Now, a lot of the Democrats, they're not so, they're not sold on Shapiro because he's Jewish. Hmm. That could create an issue, they say, for the Democrats. We'll see how it plays out. When we come back, We'll have that uh, replay of the uh, audio from the uh, interview with Jesse Jane Duff. And then we'll close out another week here on the program. Call in to the Chad Hasty Show at 1 800 687 0790. The Chad Hasty Show, broadcasting on the Texas Town Square Media Network. Today's markets from the Texas Department of Ag. Well, howdy, neighbors. Texas feeder cattle auction reporting prices steady to three bucks lower. Texas weekly direct reporting prices steady to three higher, and cattle futures were down. August live cattle futures down 70 cents, close at 184.10. August feeder cattle futures down $3.50, close at 249.65. October cotton futures were up to close at 67.18. September wheat futures up a nickel, close at 5.59 a bushel. September corn up four pennies to close at 3.86. And August soybean futures up seven cents, close at $10.29 a bushel. August soybean meal futures up $5.60, closing at $361.50 per ton. August class three milk futures down 11 cents, close at $20.29 a hundred. September crude oil futures down $2.44, closed at 73.87 per barrel. And the Dow Jones was down 610 points today, closed at 39,737. And that's the market roundup from the Texas Department of Agriculture. I'm your commissioner, Sid Miller. And remember, friends, Texas agriculture matters. So. The news and talk of West Texas. News Talk 95.1 and 790 KFYO. You're listening to the Chad Hasty Show. All right, back on the Chad Hasty Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. 
can send in your thoughts on the text line, 806-680-2790. That's 806-680-2790. Well, th- this is uh, come out on Fox News uh, a little bit earlier today. Uh, Willie Brown, who uh, knows Kamala Harris very well. Willie Brown worried that Harris has the Hillary syndrome and that people don't like her. The former San Francisco mayor, Willie Brown, was candid about Vice President Harris's chances in the 2024 presidential race in a newly published interview. Brown, who has been open about his extramarital relationship with Kamala Harris in the 90s, said he was nervous about the VP's likability with voters in the weeks before she became the nominee. Or the presumptive nominee. Brown worried out loud that Harris had the Hillary syndrome and that uh, people people would not like her. And fretted that it was not fixable, according to Politico. The interview conducted before uh, President Biden's disastrous debate and weeks before he dropped out of the 2024 race, Brown said he was no longer in touch with Harris, <laughs> according to Politico, but believed Biden should uh, step down immediately. Uh, Willie Brown also suggested that Kamala Harris uh, cling to a more vague political platform instead of the uh, far left record that she has to run on. So maybe, I don't know, maybe Kamala Harris will listen to Willie Brown again. I I mean, he served her well, according to reports in the past. They know each other very, very well. So maybe, 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 who knows? Maybe uh, she'll listen to him. I don't know. But he's afraid that uh, Kamala Harris has the Hillary syndrome and is just not likable. Join us on the phones right now as Kamala Harris has uh, landed in Texas. We know that. Uh, Gunnery Sergeant and Veterans for Trump Executive Director Jesse Jane Duff joins us here on the Chad HD Show. Welcome to the program. How are you this evening? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to have you here. Uh, I just I, I was going over this uh, story from Fox that uh, Willie Brown is very concerned that Kamala Harris is uh, that the people just don't find her likable. So uh, that's I guess th- that's something to add to the. The, uh, the the list of uh, Willie Brown quotes and news about Kamala Harris, correct? Oh, well, Willie Brown's probably the least of the references I need. I can look <laughs> straight at her own record. I mean, look, and I, look, I appreciate all the jocular humor about her past, you know, particularly her indiscretions. But when it gets down to it, her record as a prosecutor, her yep. record as vice president, her record as senator – speak uh, loud and strong. I mean, they echo of socialism, Marxism, anti-police, anti-ICE, um, anti- uh, or pro, she's not, she's pro-illegal immigration. Everything that she's been on the side of has been on the wrong side for Americans. A lot of her crime policies to this day have impacted California. I mean, she took advantage of a lot of minority communities that were in prison that should have been let out and released, but they were utilizing them to fight the wildfires in California. Yep. People that had been found innocent, she wanted to retry them, even though they had been found innocent, but wanted to go back to court for them and, you know, put them through that anguish longer. One guy had been in jail 13 years, but then she'll flip the script and turn around and have a bail fund for all of these rioters that were in Minneapolis that caused billions of dollars of damage. Not only that, two of the people that had gotten out due to her bail fund, one went on to commit a murder and one went on to commit a rape. You know, she's anti-family. We know this because she's anti-woman by the human trafficking that's going on right under our noses every single day across that border that's impacting not just men who are being brutalized and taken advantage of and not being probably uh, treated fairly by these drug cartels, but women and children, which are supposed to be the one part of society that our prosecutors, our leaders, our law enforcement are supposed to be protecting. So she's a contradiction. 
again. You know, I'm going to brutalize these prisoners, but I'm going to treat illegals um, in such a horrific way that they come over here and become part of a human trafficking or drug uh, cartel cycle where we have 300 Americans a day dying from fentanyl drug overdoses. That's equivalent to an aircraft coming down every single day. Those were the numbers in 2023. When I, I mean, I actually researched this. So when you look at all of this, you can only think to yourself, she's a massive contradiction. You're anti-police, you're anti-ICE, you allow illegals to come over, but you're also anti-woman, you're anti-family, you're anti-child. What have you done that you're for that benefits Americans? Nothing. I think she's for anything that benefits her. Uh, it, it seems and like, and 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 and, yeah. and you know, you look at uh, because I agree that this is going to be a a debate, uh, a campaign that's going to play out uh, and be a, a really a war uh, over policy, and and you see this from the news media where they're really trying to scrub her record. I mean, my goodness, uh, they're trying to say, you know, you know, they're trying to, I guess, portray her now as a moderate. Uh, trying to say that she was never the border czar, trying to say that, uh, you know, that, they're, that, that, uh, she uh, wasn't in charge of the border at all. Uh, they're trying to whitewash everything about her record. And even now, uh, this coming out earlier today, that, uh, according to, uh, the sources within Harris's campaign, she now no longer supports a federal job guarantee, which was a big part of the Green New Deal, which she favored getting rid of the filibuster to pass the Green New Deal. Again, everything is not benefiting Americans. The Green New Deal would cost billions and billions of dollars upon Americans. If you remove the fossil fuel industry, that essentially enables most Americans to lead the lifestyle that we know, we see that we have now. I mean, for them to switch this, it would destroy jobs, massive amounts of jobs. Not only that, it will impact every single element of industry that relies upon fossil fuels. It's basically a catalyst of change of telling us we all got to go back to cave mandates. You know, like it, it's an absurdity that we cannot protect our environment while we're still utilizing fossil fuels. That is just a misnomer. That's a lie that these green, green New Deal people, the green energy people have tried to push upon Americans, but yet they're profiting China because China's the one that builds most of these electric vehicle batteries. They build a lot of the solar, uh, bed, a lot of these solar panels that are going up are built in China. China is systematically trying to convince us that we are hurting our environment with fossil fuels because they profit off of us turning us into electric. And the electric in itself is harmful to the environment. When you look at how it's mined in some of these countries where they have to take these minerals that are very rare earth minerals, and they're often using human labor, you know, children, to get this out of the environment. And you've seen the photos, I'm sure, everybody on the Internet. It makes you start realizing we're really taking one and abusing the earth with another in a far more extreme way. And there's really no way to dispose of these batteries. They haven't even conquered that. What's going to happen in 10 years when all these electric vehicles now are starting to get thrown into the junkyard, so to speak? What do you do to dispose of these batteries? So. I'm arguing a moot point here. Americans should have the opportunity and choices to do what is reasonable for their family, for their productivity, and have truckers be able to utilize diesel fuel that they have been able to use, and they can do their long hauls. But to try to stick a truck with an electric battery that's going to weigh several tons, the truck itself would weigh so much on the freeways, they wouldn't be allowed on many of these freeways because of the damage that and the toll they would take. Nothing they do on the left makes sense. But they take this emotional rhetoric to get young people in particular to think you have to save your planet. They manipulate them and get them on board where the only people that are profiting and benefiting are those that are running communist type style countries such as China, those that are profiting of the Green New Deal. But it's not going to profit or benefit American families. They will definitely go broke and have to pay out the nose to try to survive under it. Ali, got a couple of minutes left here. Uh, how long do you think this honeymoon period lasts for the Harris campaign? I think it's starting to already get dismantled because if you look at the Trump campaign's media, they've had put out advertising. We put out social media. You have advocates like myself that are on the campaign. I'm the executive director of Veterans for Trump. You have their spokesperson. We are driving this home on her record, and op-eds and conservative media are getting the message out. You're not going to get it out to everybody, but that you know, I always look at it like 
when Jesus said, the poor will always be among you. Well, I look at it this way. The ignorant will always be among us, too. So you just have to work with those that you know understand that their lifestyle has changed dramatically from where it was just five years ago when Donald Trump was in the White House pre-COVID. We had a strong economy, not record rate inflation. You didn't have to hold down two jobs. You didn't have to make more than nine to $11,000 a year just to keep up with inflation. Your entire lifestyle has changed under this current administration, and Biden's stamp is all over it. I'm sorry, Harris's stamp is all over Biden's record. And not to mention, as we've already said, the border. Donald Trump won on the border in 2016. I don't think she can BS people for very long. Mm. You know, she's got 100 days. Her record went on far longer than that. And you're not going to reshape that narrative. There's a lot of resentment in the minority communities, how she has treated them. And they are echoing very loudly, which I see on social media. And I want them to continue to do that because they're the ones that have been severely impacted by her judicial uh, processes that she was practicing, particularly out in California. Remember, she never won a single delegate when she ran for president. Not one. Yep, very good points. Uh, Jesse Jane Duff, thank you so much for your time. Great to hear from you uh, this evening. Let's do it again soon. Thank you, everybody. Take the hill. We got about 100 days left, and we're going to win this. All right, sounds great. That's uh, Jesse Jane Duff here on the Chad AC Show. When we come back, your phone calls, your text, we'll wrap it up. The titan of Texas talk radio, Chad Hasty, Talking with newsmakers and about the issues that matter to you. The Chad Hasty Show, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. Chad's show is also digital with the Chad Hasty Show podcast. The Chad Hasty Show podcast can be downloaded on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and the Radio On Demand page at KFYO.com. The Chad Hasty Show, all across Texas during your drive home, weekdays from 5 to 7 p.m. To battle is to fight, to struggle, to overcome, and ultimately for the Marine Corps, it means to win. There is no alternative. It's not just a statement of intent. It's a promise to our nation, a promise kept for more than two centuries, a promise of the Marines. Chad HD show. Texture Chad, great show and guest today. Hope people will not fall for the race and gender deception. Kamala Harris's record and policy speaks for itself. Let's just focus on the truth and her policies. Also, your last guest killed it. Bravo to her. Yeah, Jesse Jane Duff, great, uh, great guest. Appreciate her for uh, joining us on the program this evening. Look, it, it's going to be a uh, a, a true, a, a, a true battle when it comes to the, the, the record or these, at least the policies. Cause you see what the news media is doing. The news media is completely, uh, completely on Kamala Harris's side and, uh, has completely taken to rewriting who Kamala Harris is. And so the those on the right, and this includes you. This it's not it's not just the the you know it's it's not just the you know people on talk radio. It's not just the you know talking heads. This this, this means all of you. You've got to get out there and remind people just how far left Kamala Harris is, and do so in an engaging way. Show past clips. Of Kamala Harris. Show uh, past stances of Kamala Harris. I've got a Breitbart story right now in front of me. During the 2019 Democrat debate, Kamala Harris pledged to ban the AR-15 via executive order. During the September 12, 2019 Democrat debate, 
Then presidential hopeful Kamala Harris pledged to ban AR-15s via executive action. She did this after then presidential hopeful Joe Biden rejected the idea, claiming that the Constitution does not give the authority for such action. Harris countered Biden saying, Joe, instead of saying, no, we can't, let's say, yes, we can. She then went on to say, yes, we can, and then described seeing autopsy photos, attending police funerals, and hugging mothers of homicide victims, citing those experiences as motivation that she planned to use to go around Congress. Harris said the idea that we should wait for Congress, which has done nothing to act, is just it's overlooking the fact that every day in America, our babies are going to school to have drills to learn to how to hide from mass shooters. I'm telling you folks this, Kamala Harris appeals to a lot of people out there. Now, she's also wildly disliked. But in a short run, Kamala Harris does appeal to a lot of people. And when you're talking about in the election that's going to come down to a handful of states... You, you, you've got to be ready to to really push back against this, uh, to push back against just the lies that the national news media is going to tell about Kamala Harris. She, they're going to try to portray her as a moderate candidate and someone who is a unifier. We have completely forgotten that Donald Trump was shot. Just, I say we as in the American public, you know, used to, something like that would have stunned a nation for weeks, if not months. And the news media is, they're, they're done with it. They don't care. It's almost like it never happened. If you didn't have congressional hearings going on, it, you wouldn't be hearing about it at all anymore. It's going to be a battle, that's for sure. Follow me on social media, at Chad AC Radio. Have a great rest of your evening. God bless you all. See you back here at 5 p.m. for the Chad AC Show. Expect to see me now at any time When you're in my arms, I'll be fine The Chad Hasty Show, a presentation of the Texas Town Square Media Network. The views and opinions expressed during the Chad Hasty Show are not necessarily the views of this station staff, management, advertisers, or Town Square Media.